Aloha, Ronnie Landis here, and I am your host for, as you may have guessed, the official Ronnie Landis podcast show. It has my name on it, so that's pretty self-explanatory. I'm also the founder of the Holistic Health Mastery Program. This is an online, highly comprehensive, highly interactive, and intuitive platform for holistic health education. You can find more information about that at holistichealthmastery.com. You can also find more information on my work and different outlets that I occupy at Ronnie, R-O-N-N-I-E, middle dash, Landis, L-A-N-D-I-S dot com. You may hear the birds chirping in the backyard. That's because I am at my Kauai house in my outdoor office which is insulated by like a nylon um, screen, but still, you know, getting all the air and everything like that. Um, and there's all kinds of birds chirping around, so you might hear that in the background. I like it. It's kind of nice. I get to look out and get color therapy because I'm looking out on this absurdly magnificent view of the whole side of town I'm on. It's the North Shore, Kilauea, if you're familiar with that. And I pretty much get a complete view of everything going on on this side. And it's just like this epic drop-off um, hill that leads into this really amazing river. And it's just covered by incredible vegetation and forage, forage and trees and just all this incredibleness. So thought I'd share that with you. So today's episode is featuring Mimi Kirk. This is an archived episode from my previous podcast a few years ago, and one to bring on an oldie but goodie and still very relevant. Now, Mimi Kirk is an incredible human being, an incredible woman that has been on a long-standing health path and transformation since the 70s when she was introduced into vegetarianism and ultimately veganism. And she tells that story eloquently in her whole journey through that process. And she was recently, um, a number of years ago, voted the sexiest vegetarian over 50, which is ironic because she's into her 70s now. And that just really is a testament to her lifestyle and the way she operates her life and her diet and all that great stuff. So she really dives into that. And this was just a very enlightening, light, and fun interview with an amazing human being. So without further ado, I want to introduce Miss Mimi Kirk. Hey everyone, this is Ronnie Landis and we're bringing you yet again another episode of the Expanded Health and Human Potential radio show. So my guest today is absolutely um, incredible, extraordinary, and she has been getting a lot of, uh, I, don't know, the word, I guess the word could be exposure, a lot of popularity in um in the raw food world, the vegetarian world, but even better than that, really getting um, a lot of exposure into the mainstream on the benefits and the youthfulness of uh, raw plant food um, and migrating more and more towards a vegetarian lifestyle. And someone that's totally inspired me and so many other people, she was actually uh, named the sexiest vegetarian over 50, and I'll let her tell you about that that's pretty extraordinary and she's actually been a vegetarian over 40 years so i i'm gonna have a lot of fun on the phone with her i'm gonna bring on miss mimi kirk hi ronnie how are you oh i'm doing fantastic how are you doing great thank you for that introduction yeah absolutely so that that's that's pretty uh that's pretty fascinating to me so you've been a vegetarian for over 40 years well, I've been a vegetarian vegan for the better part of 40 years, but I did go off on occasion, not for long periods of time, but, you know, a few months here and there, uh, and who knows why, that happens sometimes when you transition, but I, I became a vegetarian pretty early on, and basically it was about the animals, uh, the, for me, not about health. Uh, it was in the early 70s, and, 
you know, I had a piece of meat one day and, and I got the connection between flesh and it just turned me off so much. I couldn't believe it because I never really thought about it that way before. So I stopped and, and at the time I came home and told my children they were going to be vegetarians. And believe me, there weren't many of us around at the time. It was kind of an odd thing and not easy to uh, find things that you needed and my children, of course, they wanted to do it, too, once they found out about the cruelty to animals. So for the better part of 40 years, I've eaten what I consider a pretty healthy diet. Yeah, absolutely. And you definitely you definitely show it. I mean, you're <clears throat> you're radiating and um, it, it, no one could I don't think anyone off the street would be able to guess how old you really are. Well, most people don't have any idea when I tell them they're usually surprised I, look at I'm surprised <laughs> like every morning I wake up feeling so great I surprise myself when I think about the number that I am which is going to be 75 in September oh my god and I, I really I don't feel it and I really don't think about my age except the fact when I go out to speak places I really like to tell people that it really I really didn't start this raw food diet until I was 69 and it did make a big difference between even the way I ate before, which I thought was healthy. But once I went, started eating the raw food and went on a raw food way of lifestyle, it made a huge difference. I think it reversed a lot of things for me about the way I felt definitely and the way I look. So I, I know that vegetarian is a great way to eat. It's better than eating meat. Vegan is even better. But I think raw food is an ultimate diet, and it's not like everyone has to eat all raw like I do, but you have to eat 80%, 85% mm -hmm. raw foods really to, <clears throat> to aid your body as you age. So it, it does make a difference what you eat. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, I totally concur, and that's definitely been <clears throat> a huge part of my path, and it is amazing what happens as we have a general, um, uh, <clears throat> a general discourse on the aging process, what that means, what you should look like, how you should feel when you're 50 or 75, right? There's a general um, consensus on what that looks like. And obviously, it appears that that's really not, you know, that's not accurate. And so, you know, it, I think my the answer to my next question is pretty obvious. But what what do you think about like chronological aging at this point? Well, I don't know where all these people got this idea that we were supposed to age and look like we're aging so quickly. You know, I know we all age. We're all going to age. But the, but I think people aging in 50s and 60s and 70s so quickly is not really right because I think we can live to be 120. Lots of people have said that, not just me, researchers and all kinds of people said our bodies are not supposed to break down so fast. But let's look at the media, how they portray senior citizens, and people buy into it. Once you get an ache or a pain, you just say, okay, well, I'm getting old. So I think we buy into a mental attitude that really isn't working well for us. And the people who don't buy into that attitude really look and feel different. They're athletic. A man just finished a marathon at 100. I read a guy driving a car at 102. I know that guy that's out there who's 113. I met him. Uh -huh. He told me he doesn't look any different now than he did when he was 90. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. we, we, can, we can live longer and we can live healthier. And food to me is at the top of the list, but really that mental attitude about aging, if you have a negative prognosis about yourself aging, that's what's going to happen. And um, I just recently lost my elder sister, and I used to visit her at the senior home, and I watched what goes on there. And it's very depressing because if you, if you really want to pay attention to your health, I, I would advise you to go visit a senior home. That'll snap you out of it really fast and make sure you don't eat junk food. So I think people just didn't take care of themselves and have the right attitude and eat right and exercise, all the things that it takes to keep our body in better shape. And... I, I just feel, you know, I, I don't feel age at all. I really got out of bed, not an ache and pain. So, you know, if I can feel that way, I know anybody else can too. That's so powerful. I, I <clears throat> that's been my experience as well. And, um, the, the gentleman that you mentioned, that's Bernardo Lapalo. Right? Yes. Right. Yeah. 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 That, <laughs> that was so great. When I um, first heard, I first got word of him a few, like a year ago, two years ago, something like that. And, um, I was I was watching him speak, you know, giving a lecture on one of these YouTube videos, and I was just like, "Wow, he is 
not only, you know, like we, we equate health with fitness. We equate health with mo- most of like the physical structure, you know, like what, what someone looks like, but we don't really take in consideration the kind of the neurological or the mental faculties of somebody. And, and to me, that really is the crux of the matter is, is your body can break down for a number of reasons, but if you still have your mental faculties, then that's a great indicator of health. And when I saw him, I was like, wow, not only does he look really good, you know, for his age, quote unquote, but he is really sharp. He's really on it and he's he's still writing books. Oh, he's very alert. We spoke at the same event. That's where I met him in person. We he he was spoke the day before I did, and he got up on stage. Is wearing a suit. He stood there for an hour. Didn't sit down. Nobody assisting him, and he was talking like you know, explaining everything. And the funniest thing he said is that next year I'm going to open up a restaurant, and on one side I'm going to have all this raw healthy food, and the other side I'll have regular cooked food. And if someone comes in, I'll say, if you want to be healthy, come over here to the left or the walk of this, and if not, go to the right. Well, oh, that in wow. itself is funny, but the fact that he says next year I'm going to open a restaurant, he has no consciousness about age or dying. He's just yeah. here, you know? And he's just an amazing guy. And when I first learned about him, which was, uh, you know, I think he was 108 at the time, I was just completely blown away. And I think that, like, people like Bernardo and myself, I have to include it, although I'm a youngster compared to him, he told me when I met him, he said, oh, I have a daughter your age. That was really funny to me. But he... he, <laughs> he um, he and myself and a few people out there are really allowing other people to see that we can age in a different way than we're told. And and once you start on medication and drugs and you don't try to heal yourself and you allow the doctors to give you prescription and you're too lazy to do anything else but take the prescription, it starts affecting your body because the body needs to have time to heal itself. And the more drugs you take, I can see the com- com- compilation of all the drugs that my sister took and what happened to her body and how it started to shut down. One thing leads to another. So w- when you start on your first drug, that's where I think you've got to start paying attention and make sure that you do something about that. Like I did. I went to the doctors. Okay, I talked about eating this healthy diet, but for about two years, uh, I had gone on, on and off, like I said, on occasion. But for about two years, I went off and I was cooking for my boyfriend because he he wasn't a vegetarian at the time. He is now. He's vegan, actually. But he he was eating regular food. And my mom always told me the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. So I thought, I'm just going to fix him all the food he likes. Uh-huh. And uh, especially since he's 19 years younger than I am. I had felt I had to pull something out of <laughs> so my head. So you had a younger you know? man. And so I was cooking for him, and I gained 22 pounds. And I went for my annual doctor's appointment. And I had high blood pressure and high cholesterol. Wow. Well, that was probably going to happen to me anyway, but I might have pushed it up, you know, or, or caused it to happen more quickly. And he, doctor handed me a prescription, and that's when I went home and researched like crazy to see what I could do naturally. And I wasn't too excited when I heard raw food diet because I love cooking. I am I really feel I'm, I'm now a chef, a raw food chef, but at the time I was a home cook, but a really good cook. And I thought, gosh, I, I don't know about that because... I have. I just love being in the kitchen cooking. I didn't realize what a masterful thing it is—the art of raw food cooking. It's it's not celery sticks and carrots like lots of people think. It's fabulous. So I went on that way of eating. Six months later, I went back. My cholesterol dropped twenty six points, and I haven't had an arthritic pain since then. My weight dropped off, and I've been normalized for all this time just by changing my diet. And so I really feel I know it can be done, and anyone can do it, but you have to make a commitment to yourself. And I think it's so interesting now that I do eat the way I do, that people can eat a, a meal and love it, something that might not be healthy. I mean, come on, some there's a lot of food out there that's good, that's not good for us. And then, you know, the next meal, it's another thing. They can't remember they ate that delicious meal. It's gone, except that it's affecting their body. So we have to see that that pleasure on our plate can cause us a lot of problems later on in life. Yeah, that's so powerful um, because that's so true. I mean, you know, we, we we're, our, our culture is very much about instant results, instant gratification right. and I think that plays into, you know, that plays into every sector of, you know, of our culture. And um, 
you know, I, I know a lot of people that get into a different dietary change or a different lifestyle change and they'll give it a day, they'll give it two, but as soon as that that other voice in their head or that discomfort kicks in, it's like, oh, th- this doesn't work for me. I, 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 I'm I deficient or, or whatever. Whatever that mental programming is that starts to right. pop up. Or they may give it a good go and they're committed, but then a wall comes up, you know. Um, I would like you to speak to that because one thing that I, I try to educate people on is that it took you a certain amount of time to get into the place you're at. It's going to take you a little while. You're going to have to uncover some of that emotional baggage, you know, and um, I'd like you to speak to that. Well, I think you're right. I have a lot of people that tell me I just can't, you know, I'm, I'm anemic and I can't eat this way. And my doctor said I should have meat. It's the only way I'll get my vitamins. And I, it's it's become a very humorous thing to me because I hear it. Oh, I really gave it a try. I was that way, but now yeah. I'm, I can't do it. Well, I can't be in everybody's body, and I don't know what really – I'm not a doctor. I don't know what really works for somebody. Is it really true, or is it the cop-out that we some of us think that could happen with people? Mm-hmm. Or, or what is it? I really don't know, and I can't make people wrong for eating the way they do. But I do know that all the people I do know that have lost hundreds of pounds, have cured themselves from diabetes, from cancer, from arthritis, from – autism from so many things by eating a raw food diet the 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 statistics on cures from eating a raw food diet are simply amazing so is there one person out of hundreds that can't do it and what is it really for them is it because they really think they haven't gone far enough or they just in a detox period where they don't feel good and their hair is falling out and nothing seems to be working right that does happen sometimes when you start raw food things happen but if you push past that, I have found personally and with people I know that the other side of that is success. And so maybe people don't give themselves enough time or maybe they've given time and they there's something in there they haven't made the commitment. But, you know, one thing I can say now, because since I'm the age I am, I have a lot to say about what it's like getting old. There are little things that start to happen to you. And I have an autoimmune disease. And it, it's that which arthritis is, which arthritis is autoimmune. And once you have one, you get lots of other little things. But my belief is that if you eat this way, the way I do, you can keep those things at bay. They are in your body. They're in your system. They, they may be not curable, but they don't show up. They're still there, but they don't come around. Everyone has some cancer cells, I'm told. So you keep those at bay. You can keep things that your family might have that might be in your genes. You can each actually keep those things sleeping because what you're doing is you're feeding your cells. You're feeding your cells and you're making them healthier. You're replacing bad cells with good cells all the time when you eat this way. And that's what we want to do. We want to keep that body uh, without the toxins in there. That's why sometimes you go on a detox for a few days. Now, I don't advise a new person or somebody that's not eating right, to do one of those detox fasts for a week and then go back and eat the same thing again. Yeah. You haven't learned anything. And so a lot of these detoxes out there, people think it's a miracle cure in a week and that they're going to be all better. And then they do it and they're fine. And then they go back and eat what they ate before. And it's just not a good way to do it. And I think it's dangerous for people's metabolism if they're doing it just to lose weight. Mm. So I think we have to make a decision and slowly make changes. And when I say slowly, is to start with a green drink every day. Make sure you have a 16-ounce green drink every day. And, and that can be spinach and celery and cucumbers and apples and carrots. You fix something that you like the taste of. Throw a banana in if it doesn't taste right to you. But have that green, those dark leafy greens every day. And then try eating a big chopped salad for lunch. I just made a fantastic salad, kale from the garden, anything else that I had in the house, romaine lettuce from the garden, you know, tomatoes, some just some beautiful stuff. I sliced some fresh peaches in there. And then I had a little piece of cheesecake, raw cheesecake afterwards, a Mm. nice thin slice. That's what my boyfriend and I had for lunch today, a big salad and that little wonderful little dessert. Very filling, very satisfying. And I don't know what we're having for dinner yet. I haven't I haven't planned that yet, but I always keep everything in the house so I can just whip something up that's delicious and satisfying. I think it's um I think maybe when people stop like we're talking about, they might not have enough good recipes under their belt to keep them satisfied 
They might not be eating enough foods. And, you know, there's not a lot of calories in raw foods unless you're eating the nuts and, and the fattier things, which, of course, is good for our body. Avocados and oils, I think, are we need them. Nuts and seeds, things like that, coconut butter. I think our bodies need that uh, to maintain a, a youthful skin and hair and glands. So I think that maybe some of these people, Ronnie, don't have enough good food to fix for themselves. And I think that one of the reasons I think my, my book has been so successful, uh, Live Raw, and I have my second book, Live Raw Around the World, that'll be out this month, uh, the July, I think that, that people really are craving good recipes. And once you get a couple under your belt, you can learn one a week, one a month, whatever it is. You need to have some good go-to food. And I think that helps you stay on a raw food diet and doesn't give you all that wavering that goes on and people say they're not healthy from it. Because if my body at my age could be healthy from eating raw food, I, I can't imagine somebody else's would not. That's just you know, my experience for myself. Mm. Yeah, you yeah, make some excellent, excellent points. <clears throat> and one thing that's been percolating on my mind for a while um, is, is this whole idea of longevity. And I really believe that longevity is within every day. And it has more to do with how youthful you feel than it does with life extension. Although this is, this is the other part of it, and I'll have you expand it more, is that I feel like the more you're able to have a zest for life every single day, the more passion you have for living, that is actually going to help extend your life out more. The more you want to be here. I, I definitely agree with that, but if you don't feel good and you have diseases and you're sick, you don't feel very well and you can't be happy and energetic. Right. Right. So so it, it's true. We're looking not just for a long life. We're looking for a great, fun, healthy, exuberant life. Mm -hmm. No matter what age we are, it shouldn't make a difference. But if you are sick, all of a sudden, all your time is spent on that. And I can't, and I can't, stress enough to tell people the earlier you start, the better it would be. I mean, I have lines on my face. I'm expected to have lines on my face. I'm 75. However, I think had I started earlier in the raw food diet and kept my body clean in that way and exercised more in the earlier years, I definitely think I could look better than I look now, which is pretty good I look now, but I still think I could have done better because I see now the places that I could have picked up a little speed in there. But it's so hard sometimes when you're younger to think about it because you, you it's not about if you're raw, you go off once in a while. I don't like going off because I don't feel good when I do. If I travel, yeah. I had some, some pasta and I was traveling uh, this last year um, uh, to write this new book that's coming out this year. I traveled last summer to seven countries and I was in Italy and I ate a plate of pasta and the next morning, all that gluten, my hands were so stiff. I felt like I had big man hands. They were all puffy and, wow. you know, puffy under my eyes. So I really know when I eat food that's not good for me, it shows up very quickly because I'm a pretty clean eater. So if I'm eating something that's not good, I can recognize that very fast. But I can't, like I say, I can't implore people enough. You have to pay attention to so many things in your body so that as you age, you're good. And as, how did come I didn't know all of that, even though I was a vegetarian? I was thinking more of the animals and the health. It was only later that the health aspect came in. And now I see somehow I was blessed uh, by thinking about the animals, and it kept me pretty healthy. I, didn't, I do not have what my family has. The, my sister, who just passed away, had cancer and heart problems and kidney and gallstone and diabetes, and she's had it for years, tons of of medication. My other sister had cancer. My family has had diabetes, heart problems, leukemia, you know, all the things I can mention. My mother lived long, but she did take a lot of pills. But the rest of my family, my siblings are all gone. I'm the youngest of seven. And there were only three of us left. Now there's just two. And I'm so much healthier than what my family's history is. So, you know, even though you say there are genes that don't aren't functioning in the rest of your family, pay attention to that. Those are things you could get. Even though it's not the major thing, you could get them, mm -hmm. but you don't have to get them. If you take care of yourself, you could put that off. Does your, one of your parents have cancer? Does someone have uh, Alzheimer's? Do they have arthritis? If you're young and that is the history of your family, treat right now, treat yourself like, you're gonna, like you have those things. Eat like you already have them. Don't wait until you get them. Much easier to prevent it happening than to try to reverse it. So that's what I always tell people when I'm out speaking, is that don't, don't 
think that, you know, because somebody in your family lived to be 100 or 90 and uh, they smoked and ate meat and everything else, well, guess what? They could have lived to 120 <laughs> had they not done those right. things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't want to just be gangling around at, at 100 and not feeling good, but I think and I'm really excited. I'm, I'm an experiment on myself. And I really hope that I stay, uh, that all the things I'm practicing turn out like I think they will. Because, you know, when someone's 40 and they say they're a longevity expert, they might know, they might know all the things I know about eating and so forth, but they don't have the age on them. And I can say I know what happens when you get older. That's hard for someone in their 40s to say that because they don't know what it feels like, what, how your body starts to change. And that's the experience I have. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what I've been able to combat, you know, just when it was starting to make a shift into the, uh, the other realm, the one I didn't want, I cleaned myself up right away. And so I saw everything reverse. It, it's almost like a secret formula. You know, that's what raw food is. Once you're in it, those of us who know always have a smile on our face. Huh. You're at your ideal weight without working at it. Your hair's thick. Your skin's soft and smooth. You've got the vitality and energy of your youth. Your body heals itself of disease, you know, immediately. And it's, it's, like a, it's like a formula of something. It's not a pill. It's not a drug. It's food. It's what we're supposed to be doing. It's, this, it's food the way it was meant for us to eat. So mm -hmm. I love it. I tell you, I'm, I took the Raw Food Chef course recently with Matthew Kenny and uh, his culinary school, raw food school. And I absolutely loved it. I've been a very good cook, but now I'm a chef and I learn so much more than I already know, nice skills. And I make so many delicious dishes that I always made. I've just kind of upped it now. And now I see it's more fun to eat this way than it is the other food. It really is. Yeah. The flavors come through. When you're finished eating, you feel amazing. That's the big thing. How many meals that people who eat cooked food, they eat this cooked food, and then they feel afterwards they're so sluggish they just need a nap, you know? <laughs> yeah. They don't feel good. Yeah, on, on raw food, you can say the prayer before dinner. Uh, on cooked food, you have to say the, the prayer after dinner. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I mean, I really, I love the way the food tastes. I feel great after I eat. It doesn't drag me down. It energizes me and cooked food. Even if it's, you know, it's funny, Ronnie, even if cooked vegetarian food feels heavy on my stomach yeah. when I eat it, it doesn't feel, it takes a longer time to digest cooked food than it does raw food. So your body is working 30 hours instead of 18 hours, you know, if you're if you're eating cooked food, it takes a longer time for it to digest. It stays in your body, and that's when disease starts to happen. When food sits in there or turns toxic, it's easy for disease loves living in a toxic body. It will not live in an alkaline body. It doesn't like it. You're not being a very good host if you have an alkaline body. So it's really a good way to keep yourself to think of it in that way. Yeah. Yeah, and that and that makes it simple. And you you touched on a really great point about you know there it, it, and myself included. You know I study all the the biochemistry and all the science and and correlate it with amazing people like you. And that's one thing to have the information so I can create kind of like statistical strategies or theories in a lot of cases. But it's quite a different thing to actually be one of those longevity. Um, uh, experiments if you will and to have that experience too you don't necessarily have to have all the information but you can say look I have the results and if you like it I can share what I've done with you and I, I think that at the end of the day that that's really speaks um, speaks volumes well I think so too and you know it's interesting that when you introduced me and you said something about my following well when I was voted the sexist vegetarian over 50 I was, um, it was like a week, week or two before my 71st birthday. I was the oldest one in that contest. Mm -hmm. And I was just, you know, I had 100 people on my Facebook page, just my family and friends. I wanted to stay in touch and see what my granddaughters and grandsons were doing. So I had a Facebook page. So as soon as I was one of the uh, contestants in there, one of the 10 contestants, uh, the press, local press started getting in touch with me. And before I knew it, within even before the contest was over, my Facebook went to 1,500. 
Now, I, I was a raw foodist, but no one really knew until that happened, until I was put in the public eye. And since then, I have hundreds of thousands of followers, and my YouTube videos have reached way over a million views. And this just I happened because I somehow got thrown out into the public eye. And I was kind of the, one of the older ones in that group. There are a lot of 50-year-olds, but, you know, when you get into that 70-year-old, there's not too many raw foodists in the 70-year-old bracket who are, you know, living it as much as, as I am. And it made me very popular because people are looking for that. And I always wonder, I mean, everyone wants to be healthy, but I think there's a, a large group of people that are my fans. And I get emails from them. They maybe wouldn't eat raw food, but they're more concerned with their beauty. They yeah. want to look yeah. good. They don't want to lose their beauty. And I think sometimes it's easier for people to uh, be be uh, committed to eating this way because they care about what they look like. Now, for me, I think it comes from the inside. Absolutely. And if you're healthy inside, you glow on the outside. Someone can have not the perfect features. They could have, you know, you know, their face might not be what someone would consider a beautiful face. However... There's a glow and a spirit. And you, when you look at them, you see a beautiful person. And I think that's what beauty really is. It's not about the hair, color of your hair. You know, I do color my hair. It's obvious I'm blonde. I, I just dress the way I feel, you know, the age I feel. I color my hair because I don't feel like a gray-haired person. I feel like a youthful person. So I have my outside look like I feel inside. But I think it's really true. A lot of people are eating this way to be thin and to be beautiful. And whatever the reason is for you, it's good to, to eat this way. So I'm all for it. But I think women should just allow themselves not to think about that as much, but to think about health. Because diets don't work. If you think about being healthy and you eat to be healthy, that's important. But if you think about just the physical part, you might have a shock later on because things do change. You might not like the way you age. And even though you might look good to other people, to yourself, you're still going to be picking at a line around your eye or around your mouth or, you know, there's so many people that go get plastic surgery and Botox because they can't accept themselves the way they are. Mm -hmm. Just eat healthy. Just keep, continue to eat healthy. And then just love the way you are, no matter what it is. Just love your body. Love your face. Just love yourself and not worry about those things so much. Don't focus on that. Focus on being healthy. Mm -hmm. That's so true. And being in being in Hollywood, Los Angeles, <clears throat> working with people, I definitely see that. And it's it's so true about beauty being on the inside because that that creates a magnetism that that penetrates the outside. And you know that very well. It shows up on your skin. It shows up in the clarity of your eyes and your your hair quality. <clears throat> And it shows up also in the connection that we have with other people. And this is kind of a scientifically validated point about like the electrical conductivity in our body and how that actually allows us to connect heart to heart with another person. And I think that is what a lot of people are going for, really. They don't know it, but I think that's really they're going for right. that human connection. And we've lost that through technology, but through living this lifestyle i've noticed my connections are so much more rich they're so much more pure and they're so much more um uh, for lack of a better word i would say sustained or meaningful and i i think this so this lifestyle really taps you into the bigger of it not just you know maybe your initial entry point was for quote unquote vanity and you want to look better, but you realize that it actually started tapping you into a grander vision of your life, and that started to penetrate your other relationships. I, I totally agree with that. I mean, it's it, raw eating this way, eating a pure way, not killing to eat. It's a very spiritual life, and it comes in a very subtle way. And I, I've been meditating since I'm 30, uh, uh, many, many, many years and I really believe that my spiritual uh, quest of not eating animals happened because I was connected to everything by meditation. Mm. But I find when people start eating raw food, even without meditation, they become more conscious about the planet, about the people around them. Uh, <clears throat> eating raw food really is showing love to yourself. 
And when you love yourself, it really is easy to love others. So the connection, like you mentioned, is deeper. Relationships are better all the way around. And the, and the happiness is so amazing. Yeah. I, I think it spreads out to so many different things. Uh, when you're eating this way, when you're eating a clean diet and your body feels healthy, it really, can you imagine, I mean, if we have a cold or we wake up sick one day, it's kind of miserable, but there's a lot of people that are sick all the time and I don't even think they realize it. You, you see somebody who's very overweight and they can have a hard time walking. They, in some way, I think they feel that's the way they're supposed to feel. Mm -hmm. It feels natural to them because they're so used to it. They don't know that there's even a better way to feel. And I hate when I see young kids today who are obese and there's a lot of that going on today. Uh, it's, it's sad to me when I see a whole family that's overweight and I know that they can't wake up feeling good. I know they have to be tired and sluggish and feel sick and achy. And, and I feel so bad when I see people at the market shopping and throwing all that processed junk food in their basket. And I know down the line what's going to happen for them. You know, all the information is out there right now to eat better. The media talks about it. You know, Dr. Oz, Oprah, all the people that, you know, who are out there in the media that people watch. There's enough places out there telling us to eat all our vegetables and fruit. But I don't think people really realize it. They have all reasons not to. And I think so because cooked food and the kind of food that's processed is addictive. They make it addictive. They put extra salt. They put extra sweet. They put things in there that make us want to go back for more of that processed food. And I think if someone doesn't want to go on a raw diet, that's okay, whatever you think works for you. But just cut out processed food. Eat fresh food, fresh organic food. Fix it yourself at home. Don't eat out as much. I think it's very, very important to people to cut out the processed food. Just read what's on the bag or the box or the can or the pouch. And if you don't know what it says, you shouldn't be eating it. Look it up. Most of it is just horrible. Our body, it's, not, it's not identical. It's fortified vitamins. It's all stuff that they put in there for us to eat. Blueberry cereal, there's no blueberries in it. <laughs> carrot, carrotless carrot cake, you know? I mean, no one knows. They think it's carrot cake. Oh, that must be healthy. But they don't read the labels on it. So even waking up to that right now would be a very big thing for anybody listening to this. If you don't eat raw food, you're not interested in it right now, that's fine. Look and see what you are eating, though. Fix a green drink. If you do nothing else, juice, have that. And then you'll see you feel so good from that. And when you eat something cooked, just start noticing afterwards how you feel. But try to get fresh food and try to stay away from those packaged, packaged foods. It's all processed. It's not giving you the vitamins you need. And our bodies need nutrients every day. You can't get it from that food. That fills you up, but you don't have any nutrients. You can go days on end eating processed food and not even getting any vitamins or nutrients. You have no idea, but you think that it's in those boxes and bags and cans. It's not, you're getting nothing. Mm -hmm. It's empty calories, empty calories, no nutrients in it. Yeah, absolutely. And so it's, it's just a simple, it's a really a simple, um, you know, approach is just adding in a, a good thing every day because um, what we're what we're doing is this is not a diet like people are getting so confused about dieting it's really you can't diet yourself to good health you just have to you have to step out on a habit so we're you know it's like just constructing a habit and that habit will lead to another thing and lead to another thing and eventually that becomes a lifestyle and you know it's unique to the person obviously but I think that's really what we're getting to we've lost kind of those old-fashioned simple values and principles and um, we've settled for quote-unquote convenience but it's not convenient because you, you obviously as you touched on before is it leads to a probable outcome of sickness disease pharmaceuticals and you know so on and so forth so I, I my personal feeling is that we, we have to see long term by our short term actions and where where are these choices leading us? Right. And I mean, I don't know. I have a lot of young people that are fans and they say, you know, kids that are like teenagers still in school and they say they want to eat, a, you know, a diet different than their family wants to feed them. They're afraid for them to become a vegan. They think it won't be healthy for them. And so I think all of us out here are educating all the time. And having people listen to us speak and whatever we're doing, we're educating people. And I think we're moving very quickly. 
because in the days when I first started to eat, uh, cut meat out of my diet, anything with a face is what I used to tell my kids. They still ate cheese and we still had that kind of dairy because I didn't understand the vegan thing until later. Uh, and then, of course, I went vegan. But we are educating people. The information is there. We're spreading very quickly. I mean, look how many raw food restaurants there are. Yeah. Vegetarian vest restaurants, vegan restaurants all over the world. We just got back from that seven country tour I talked about, I was able to eat everywhere I went. I was able to eat good food. People didn't look at me when I said, you know, I would like just vegetables. I remember before, early on in the 70s, when I'd say, I, I don't eat any meat, they looked at me like something was wrong. Mm -hmm. But it's not like that now. Everybody knows what that is. Everybody's heard the word vegetarian. Everybody's basically about has heard the word vegan. Um, you know, there are a lot of, there are a lot of countries where their people are vegetarians, like in India. Um, in fact, in August, we're going to an Indian wedding. It's going to be actually in New York, but it's going to be a three-day wedding, all vegetarian food. So a lot of people eat vegetarian food, and the next step up for them really would be vegan and cutting out all the dairy. I know it's very hard to cut out cheese, but raw cheeses have become amazing. They're, there are some raw cheeses that are coming on the market now. They're not like the soy cheeses. They're not like the old vegan cheeses. Hmm. They're nut-based cheeses, and they're aged. And they cut like a regular cheese. They taste like a regular cheese. I make all different kinds for different dishes, all different kinds of cheeses, because I always love cheese. And they're very delicious and very satisfying and very good for you. Yeah. And you don't need to eat much because it seems when you eat rich uh raw foods, things that have nuts in them. You only have a small amount of it, like the, the cheesecake we had today. We only had, you know, it would be like one small piece of cheesecake, a little wedge, like a pie wedge, and then that was cut in half for two people. It's only like a sliver. And I and I really feel that they the, those kinds of foods, when you're eating raw foods, you get very satisfied with that. It satiates you because you're getting all the nutrients quickly into your body. You don't have to eat a lot of that empty air food, especially that diet food that's out. <laughs> those 100 calorie food. bars of ice cream, you can eat 10 of those suckers, you know? <laughs> they don't do anything for you. <laughs> They're no. nothing. They, they don't they, I'd rather I'd rather see someone eat a real ice cream bar than that. That's just full of chemicals and right. it's so bad for you. Yeah. So <laughs> you know, there's so much information out there and we could talk for hours and hours about everything because anytime I I have an interview. I talk to anybody who, who feels the same way I do. It's so much fun because we know, we know, and we want so much for other people to understand how their life could be different, how they can transform their health and the people they love. I mean, mothers who are feeding their kids junk food, really transform yourself, transform the people you love, get the junk out of your cupboards in your house, feed your children fresh food, teach them something about diet so they don't have illnesses and so forth. And particularly today with food being genetically modified and all the fast foods that are out there and the food that's unhealthy for us, the taste buds really go for that. Those, those guys in those white lab coats that make up all this fake food for us, they're geniuses. They know how to make us keep eating. Open up a bag of something, you can't stop eating until it's gone. So I, I think that's a, that's a really big thing. Um, Joe Cross, the guy who did uh, Sick, Fat, and Nearly Dead, I love a saying of his. He said that uh, there's the guys in white coats that are making our food today, and then there's the guys in the white coats that are taking care of us after we're sick. That's so yeah, I would yeah. say to stay away from the white coats <laughs> in general. Yeah, yeah I have a um, – there's something I've been saying lately um, – those those um, scientists in the white coats that are trying to crack the code of the universe are taking their lunch break to get food out of the vending machine, and they're not going to crack anything doing that. Right. Well, they're they're they, you know I so strange the way they look at it. They know that food is addictive. They have all these these extracts and flavors and seasonings and stuff they put in food to fake us out. So guess what? It's our responsibility. It isn't yeah. theirs. It isn't our doctors. It's our responsibility to educate ourselves and to figure out how we want to feel and then understand that food is the best medicine. It's the best. 
exercise. It's so important. You've got to move it. Yeah. You can't just be a couch potato. You've got to stretch your body, especially, especially as you age. I do yoga and I walk. And I seriously, I've done a little on and off my whole life, spinning and everything else. I wish I would have stated it regularly, but I've never been one who liked exercise that much. So now I've got myself doing it because now I've now at this age, I realize, oh my God, I've got to do that. So I'm doing yoga a few times a week. I'm walking uh, every chance I can. I'm not lazy. I park far from the store when I'm going shopping. I don't try to find the space up close. <laughs> you know, it's funny with elderly people, they always think they have to make things easy. They don't want to lift and don't, you know, make things easy for yourself. I try to make it difficult. Wow. I want to walk the stairs. I want to lift the heavy grocery bags. I don't want people putting my food bags in the car for me. I want to do those things. I'm not trying to make my life easier as far as those things go. I look at everything like it's exercise. Even when I'm autographing books, I've got the stack of books in one place. I have all the envelopes and stuff that I put them in on the floor. That means I have to bend over from my desk every time to pick up a bag. I could put them all up on top of the desk, but I leave them down there because guess what? That's the way I can bend and get exercise. So not being lazy and leaving things at the bottom of the stairs until you get a pile to take up when you're going up, take them up when you've got something in your hand. Just walk up with it. It's really important to, to train your mind to keep exercising that way. And then we talked about the frame of mind, which is yeah. so important. And also, you know, you have to, you know, you can eat a giant salad, but you don't want to eat until you're full because then 20 minutes later, you'll really be full. Eat until the people who live to be 100, they say they eat till they're 80% full. They watch what they eat, and when they feel a little full, they wait for a while to see if they're really hungry or if they're just eating out of habit. And I think people just eat out of habit. Once you eat raw food, it kind of normalizes. You know when you're full, and that's it. You're finished. Some days I'm very hungry. Some days I don't eat much food. My body really tells me what I need. And, you know, I think it's an important thing. And the other thing people always ask me about is wine. Can they drink wine? Yeah. Well, wine has resveratrol in it. And it's said that the elderly people who live to be 100 in Sardinia, men particularly, usually men go first, they, they walk every day to visit friends and they drink two very small glasses of a special kind of red wine. And it's made with the Cananu grape. And it's got the double resveratrol in that. So you can buy that Cananu wine in the States and it should be like 90% at least can a new grape because that's the grape that has double the resveratrol. But you can't save up two little glasses every day and drink 14 on Saturday. You know? yeah, right. <laughs> you can't party on the weekend and put yeah. them all together. Yeah. But it's okay if somebody wants. I don't drink much wine. Only very on occasion I'll sip a little wine if it's some really good like Brunello or some Italian wine I love. But I don't really have the taste buds for it anymore. Not that I drank a lot before, but it's even less in, than it was before because I did like nice wine with dinner. But don't. this is supposed to be an enjoyable trip, life. Right. But what I'm doing is not like hardship. I love the food. If I want a glass of wine, I can have it. If I feel like eating something, I can have it. I don't feel restricted, even though it's not raw. If I want to eat it, who's stopping me? It's just me. I know how I feel much better eating raw. But if I want something, it's fine for me to eat it. I know I'm going to not feel so good afterwards. I will eat a cooked artichoke or a sweet potato and those feel fine to me but most anything else if I'm cooking vegan food for my boyfriend and I taste something even that tastes very heavy to me so I just follow my I'm clean enough now that I just follow my body and uh, uh, I think that's the way we all have to do we, we this is not torture eating a raw food diet eating healthy it's so worth it the way you feel energetic and you know and to have so much energy at my age it's just an amazing thing to me yeah, that, yeah, was, that was beautifully beautiful said. said, and that's, that's been my experience. Nice and uh, uh, yeah, I, you, you really, you really laid it out there. I mean, it's not, it's not about you know restricting yourself. It, it's just about following a better path, and uh, you know, having fun with it too. That's so important. So I, I just want to say thank you so much for joining joining me on the show i i just got another little zest for life right right from this conversation i know everyone's going to gain so much out of it so where can um where can people find out more about you 
Well, I have a website, which is youngonrawfood.com, mm. youngonrawfood, singularfood.com. I'm very active on Facebook. My two Facebook pages are full, but anyone could contact me. I answer questions all the time on my Facebook fan page, and that is Mimi Kirk, and it says author after. So if you just put in in the search column Mimi Kirk author, it will come up, and you can have as many fans on that page as possible. So I'm always there. There's, you can send me a private message or whatever. I love to answer questions. And I'm in the San Diego area. You can check my website for any uh, events that I have coming up. I do a lot of speaking and demos. And I also do private consulting. I do some on the phone, some in person if they're here. And I only take a couple clients a month. And uh, I like to really, my passion really is to help people get healthier. I have a, I have a, I, I feel retired, but not really. <laughs> my second book is coming out and I'm very proud of it. Raw Food Around the World. Live Raw is still available. And you can get that off my website. And, uh, you know, I'd like to speak to anybody if they have any questions. Great. Well, thank you so much again. This was an absolute pleasure for me. Thank you, Ronnie. It was a pleasure talking to you. Absolutely. All right. Take care. You too. Bye. All right, everybody. This was another episode of the Expanded Health and Human Potential radio show. I hope you guys got a lot out of it. I know I did. Um, check out Mimi Kirk and all her work out there in the world, and we will see you guys next time.